Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're comparing the Nike Zoom Fly 3 against the Nike Next Percent Tempo. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to 40 Runs. Now, if this is your first time at 40 Runs, I want you to smash that pink button down there that says subscribe on it. Go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Runs Runner community and check out the description. There's loads of cool things, including the link to where you get both of these shoes. Right now, I thought this would be a good matchup. Uh, you've obviously seen the video I did on this shoe uh, and we won't go into that too much, but I thought it'd be cool to compare it to the Zoom Fly 3. Now, does this offer more value than this? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. So let's get stuck in. Right guys, so here we go. We've got two plated shoes, different materials, but two plated shoes and two price points that are a little bit different, but when they first came out, very similar. This shoe is retailing at 140 pounds, 165 pounds, but you can get this shoe at under 100 pounds, which is why I wanted to do the review today. Before we get into that, stats and features time, and we'll start with the tempo. Tempo, like I said a second ago, 165 pounds here in the UK. It's got a 10 mil drop, 9.8 ounces. Stack height of 46 mil in the back and 36 in the front. Got a nylon plate. You've got React foam in the rear uh, and the more durable zoom, zoom X, if I could speak English, up the front. You've got the two, uh, zoom, um, two zoom AirPods. You've got the AirPods, two zoom AirPods uh, up the front here. Be great if I could speak today, wouldn't it? And then we've got the flying it upper. Then we've got the Zoom 3, which has been out a little while now, and you've got the Vapor Weave upper on it. Like I said a second ago, you can get this shoe for under £100 now here in the UK, which is pretty awesome. Um, you've got a boot construction, so it's like an all-in-one. Uh, <laughs> I love this from Nike. It's got a lacing system. Well, thanks very much. You've got React midsole on this shoe all the way through. Uh, carbon plate. Uh, like I said a second ago, you've got rubber, uh, forefoot and heel to give you sort of a little bit of traction. It's weighing in 8.9 ounces for a size 9, uh, 36 mil in the heel, 28 in the front. So we've got an 8 mil drop. Okie dokie. Right, so firstly, I want to talk about the stability um, because that is one of the positives I saw about this tempo. It is definitely a more stable ride than this shoe. Can you see the width there? Also on the outsole, this is definitely more durable, the tempo I'm talking about. This is my Zoom Fly 3s. They've held up reasonably well. Uh, I've got wear here and there um, now, but you know, actually overall, they're not too bad. You've got exposed React foam here, and you've got the same on there, but you can see already that um, this is starting to wear, but that is definitely more um, sort of exposed than this. This is a slight arch, see that? Probably not. Uh, on the uppers, I prefer personally the vapor weave. It's just me, it's personal preference. Some people like the flying it, some people like the vapor weave. For me, I prefer the vapor weave. I just prefer the, the overall feel of it and the breathability. This is probably more breathable, but this does a good job, and I like the way that they've combined it with the booty construction, the all in one fit. I do like that in a shoe. Um, that's just me being lazy. And I really like uh, the lacing here, it does give you that. Lockdown feel. Um, the plate is noticeable-ish. Um, it is definitely, like both of these shoes, uh, better when you're running at speed in these. So 5K, 10Ks um, is probably where these sort of excel. I wouldn't say this has a, a real sort of noticeable push from the heel to the front like this does. With the combination of the React and Zoom X, it does try and really get you onto those uh, pods to give you that push off. This is less noticeable in terms of the carbon plate and the propulsion. Um, both fit true to size, by the way, so I just didn't mention that. Uh, this is definitely a wider fit than this, um, which is cool. This comes in some awesome colorways. We've not got the new colorways from this yet, but they will be dropping when this goes on in general sale. And yeah, so which one do I prefer? Well, Hopefully, like I said, you've seen the video for this. Now, I think this is one of the biggest wastes of money in 2020, 165 pound for a shoe that looks like it's been put together by a child who's making like sort of craft at school. And there's so much glue shoved all over it, it's just terrible. The uh, ride of the shoe is okay. It's a little bit firmer than I was expecting, uh, but actually when you do get a little bit faster into the run is where you can see where it comes a little bit into its own but I still think it's a massive, massive disappointment. So I would not waste your money on this shoe, people. Go and buy the sock any speed. But if you're looking at the Nike website and you're looking at both of these thinking, what do I go for? I would recommend you check out the Zoom Fly 3 over this. Um, why? 
because this is under 100 pounds, you will get a plate in it. You do get React foam in it. Yes, it's heavier. Yes, you could argue it's not as breathable, but I think if you're a Nike fan, this is the way to go versus this. Out of the two, I would, <laughs> I would actually say, get yourself along to a Nike retail outlet and try and uh, sort of grab a pair of the um, Nike Pegasus Turbo 2s if you can still get them. Because I've seen people getting them for 60 quid, which is an absolute steal. And I think that shoe is better than both of these. But if we're looking just at these two, which is why I tried to make this video, then go for the Zoom Fly, people. Whatever you do, don't buy this heap of junk.